Lucy Letby is accused of the murder of seven babies and the attempted murder of ten others. While she was working on the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital, Letby denies all of the charges over the incidents. Lucy Letby was the only person working on the night shift. It was alleged in court that their mother was apparently told by Miss Letby, trust me, I'm a nurse. This is a podcast about one of the most anticipated criminal trials for years. It involves the most shocking of allegations, the alleged murders and attempted murders of tiny, premature babies at the hands of a neonatal nurse whose very job it was to look after them. Lucy Letby is on trial at Manchester Crown Court, accused of killing seven infants and injuring ten more at the Countess of Chester Hospital in Cheshire. In total, there are 22 charges, all of which she denies. I'm Liz Hull, Northern Correspondent for the Mail, I will be in court to report on the case as it develops. And I'm Caroline Cheatham, a broadcast journalist. Every week on this podcast, we'll examine what's happened and bring you the details behind the headlines. This is the trial of Lucy Letby. The case against Lucy Letby is that she murdered or tried to kill 17 babies while she was working as a neonatal nurse at the Countess of Chester Hospital in the northwest of England. She denies the charges. The babies in this trial are not being named for legal reasons, and the identities of their families are also being protected. They're known only as babies A to Q. Seven of the babies died. Ten survived. Each one of these babies was or is someone's son or daughter and the mums, dads and families of every baby are present in court, listening to every detail of how their child was allegedly killed or harmed. We'll be bringing you that detail as the jury is hearing it from the prosecution and defence. We're getting behind the headlines to explain far more than the news reports you'll be reading, watching and listening to. And the importance of a fair trial is paramount, so we won't be getting into anything in this podcast that the jury have not been told, because they are the 12 people who have to decide the outcome of this case. The jury have now heard all the evidence about the 17 babies in the case, and the prosecution have now turned their attention to what happened after Lucy Letby was removed from the neonatal unit in July 2016. In this episode, we'll hear that Lucy Letby was arrested by police more than two years after she was removed from the ward. We'll also explain that when her home was searched, Documents, including a diary, handwritten notes and medical sheets were found. We'll also tell you what she had to say when she was interviewed by detectives and how she searched for the parents of the alleged victims on Facebook months after their children were killed or harmed. And we'll explain that as images of her bedroom with fairy lights and teddy bears were shown to the jury, Lucy Letby wept in the dock. Welcome to episode 29, Arrested. So, Liz, as we outlined last week, the prosecution case is now drawing to a close. Nick Johnson Casey has finished presenting the evidence on exactly how, they say, Lucy Letby murdered and tried to kill babies A to Q. He's now taking the jury through what happened after she was removed from the unit and when the police were called in. Lucy Letby was first arrested during a dawn raid on her home, which was around two miles from the hospital on July the 3rd, 2018. Now that's more than two years after the alleged attack on the final victim, Baby Q. Her home was searched and she was interviewed before being released on police bail. During the investigation, she was arrested twice more after moving back to her parents' home in Hereford on June the 10th, 2019, and then again 17 months later on November the 10th in 2020. The jury was told that both her house and her parents' home were searched by officers as part of their inquiries. So Liz, what did the jury hear about what was found? Detective Constable Colin Johnson is an exhibits officer with Cheshire Police. Now, he was called to give evidence and took the jury through what police discovered at Lucy Letby's three-bedroom semi in the Blaken suburb of Chester. They were shown a floor plan of the property and photographs of her bedroom and other rooms. These included a box bedroom, which appeared to have been decorated like a nursery, and the garage. 
Lucy Letby actually became upset in the dock and started crying when pictures of her bedroom, which was called Bedroom One, were shown on the large screens in the courtroom. Now, Liz, these photographs gave the jury a bit of an insight into Lucy Letby's personal life, and we will be sharing them on our Twitter feed. What they showed were two teddy bears on an unmade double bed uh, with fairy lights hanging over the bedstead. A pink and white spotted dressing gown was hanging on the back of the bedroom door and two framed prints with the slogans shine bright like a diamond and leave sparkles wherever you go could be seen on the walls. But jurors were told that it was other items discovered in her bedroom and in the house that were significant. DC Johnson told the court that two handbags were found on the floor of the bedroom and inside one of them were three handwritten notes, one yellow post-it note, one blue post-it note and another on a white piece of paper. All three notes were crammed with chaotic jottings of words and phrases. They were handed to the jury to have a look at. Among the words scrawled on the white note was the name of the doctor, who we can't name for legal reasons, who she had a close friendship with, and we've been calling Dr A. Next to his name, written in black and red ink, was My best friend, love. I loved you and I think you knew that. I wanted you to stand by me, but you didn't. Also interspersed with these phrases were others, including I can't do this anymore. I've tried my best. Help me. And I am the bad guy. The names of other colleagues, including Karen Rees, the hospital manager, who you might remember initially refused Dr Stephen Breary's request for Lucy Letby to be removed from duties following the death of the second triplet, Baby P, were also scrawled on the note. The yellow post-it note contained the first names of the triplets involved in the case and underneath had been written, Today is your birthday, but you aren't here, and I'm so sorry for that. I'm sorry you couldn't have the chance at life, and for the pain. I can't do this anymore. The words help and bastards had also been written in capital letters. Mr Johnson told the court that also discovered in the bedroom, in the top drawer of a chest of drawers, was a 2016 diary. The prosecution say Lucy Letby wrote the first initials of two of the three triplets she's accused of murdering in the diary on the days they died. A reference to twins known in the case as babies L and M was also recorded in an entry on April the 8th. On April the 9th, a note saying twin resus had been made. Now you might remember the Crown say Lucy Letby attempted to murder the twins on the same shift on April the 9th in 2016. A printout of results of a blood test and a resuscitation note relating to baby M that had been handwritten on a paper towel were also found in a shopping bag at Lucy Letby's home. And according to the prosecution, something else of significance was also found. Yes, the jury was reminded about a green post-it note they'd heard about at the start of the trial when the prosecution first opened their case back in October. On that note, which was headed Not Good Enough, Lucy Letby had written in capital letters... I am evil. I did this. This note has been voiced by an actor. There are no words. I am an awful person. I pay every day for that. I can't breathe. I can't focus. Kill myself right now. Overwhelming fear. Panic. I'll never have children or marry. I'll never know what it's like to have a family. No hope. I haven't done anything wrong. Police investigation, forget slander, discrimination, victimisation, all getting too much, everything taking over my life. Hate myself so much for what this has, I feel very alone and scared. What does the future hold? How can I get through it? How will things ever be like they used? Hate, panic, fear, lost. I don't deserve to live. I did this. Why me? I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough for them and I'm a horrible, evil person. I don't deserve mum and dad. World is better off without me. We should point out that when Lucy Letby's barrister Ben Myers case he gave his opening statement back in October, he insisted this note was not a confession. Instead, he said it was the anguished outpourings of a young woman in fear and despair which she'd written after she'd learned that she was being accused of killing newborn babies that she'd done her best to look after. 
The court heard that another piece of A4 paper was also found inside the diary. This contained hundreds of incoherent notes and thoughts and had the names of colleagues, medical terms and phrases crammed onto it. These included, I don't know if I killed them. Maybe I did. Maybe this is down to me. And kill me, which was written in bolder ink and circled. The jury was told that two supermarket bags for life were also retrieved from under Lucy Letby's bed. The first one had Ibiza emblazoned on it. You may remember that Lucy Letby went on holiday there in June 2016. She returned on the 22nd of June and it's the prosecution's case that over the next three days she attacked and murdered two of the three triplets and attempted to murder another baby. Jurors were shown a photo of the Ibiza bag and its contents, which we'll also share on our Twitter feed. Inside were four handover sheets relating to her shifts on these dates and another from a shift on June the 28th. Some of these handover sheets were shown to the jury. The type documents, which are given to nurses when they first come on duty, include brief details about the clinical condition of each baby on the unit at the time and which member of staff is looking after them. On the back of these sheets, Lucy Letby had handwritten notes about the treatment she'd given to the babies she was responsible for. Other items in the bag included her work name badge, which had a yellow butterfly on it. Another 31 handover sheets were also found inside a Morrison's bag in the room. This is the bag that contained the blood test result and the paper towel with resuscitation notes on it that related to baby M. In fact, the jury were told that in total, 257 shift handover sheets were recovered from Lucy Letby's home and that of her parents by police. Of those, 21 related to 13 of the alleged victims in the case. Four of the babies, babies A, C, D and K, did not feature in any of the handover sheets recovered. And you might remember that jurors have heard from other nurses previously in the trial who've given evidence that these handover sheets are confidential and shouldn't be taken home by staff. Mr Myers, though, pointed out that a great majority of the sheets, some 236, were irrelevant to the case because they referred to shifts and to babies not involved in this trial. Jurors were also shown a picture of a smaller bedroom at Lucy Letby's home, called Bedroom 3. This room had tree and owl stickers on the wall and appeared to have been decorated like a nursery. Jurors were told that Lucy Letby's desk at the hospital was also searched in July 2018, following her first arrest. Inside a blue folder, officers found a holiday request form dated September 1st, 2017, which was covered in love heart doodles. Dr A's name had been written repeatedly, alongside a series of jumbled words and phrases. These included, Love, I trusted you with everything. One day I won't think of you anymore. Please help me. Other phrases scrawled on the form were, I just want life to be as it was. I really can't do this anymore. I want to be happy in the job that I loved. This situation could have been avoided. It needn't have ever come to this. The second search of Lucy Letby's home, following her second arrest on June 10th, 2019, also uncovered another note in a black bin bag found in a garage. Jurors were shown a picture of this bin bag, which again we'll share with you on Twitter. And again, on this A4 piece of paper were similar jumbled writings, including I am a failure. No one will ever know what happened or why. Broken hearted. I don't know if I can ever go back. Too much has happened. I can't recover from this. And killing me softly. After Lucy Letby was arrested, she was interviewed by detectives and in court, the jury heard what she said during some of those interviews. She denies harming any babies in this case. Yes, Lucy Letby was interviewed three times. These interviews were long, but they've been cut down for the trial and relevant sections are being read to the jury. And it's important to say here that these versions have been agreed by the prosecution and the defence. So in court, these interviews were effectively role-played. Prosecutor Philip Asprey played the part of the detective. And Detective Sergeant Danielle Stonia is playing the part of Lucy Letby. So far, these interviews have focused on babies A to I. We're going to hear first from an extract of the police interview which focuses on what detectives found after analysing Lucy Letby's phone. It revealed 
that she'd searched for the parents of her alleged victims on Facebook in the days, weeks and months after they were allegedly murdered or harmed. She looked on Facebook for the mums and dads on numerous occasions, even on her days off, and on one occasion on Christmas Day in 2015. And the police questioned her about this. She said she couldn't remember making the searches online, but she didn't dispute it. It's important to say here that Mr Myers pointed out previously that she'd performed many searches on Facebook over this time, including for parents of other children she'd treated who were not part of this case. But police were keen to ask her why she might have done this. They asked her about the fact that she'd looked up the parents of babies E and F ten times in six months, including on Christmas Day. Lucy Lepp is accused of murdering baby E on August the 4th, 2015, by allegedly injecting him with air. She's also accused of attempting to murder his twin brother, baby F, by poisoning him with insulin the following day. The following exchange between the detective and Lucy Letby has been voiced by actors. Do you remember making those searches? No. Ten searches, nine for their mother and one for their father. Do you have any explanation why that number of searches were made for those parents? Only if to see how baby F was. Why would you want to know about baby F? Because members of staff care what happens to babies, obviously when they have been through a difficult time. You were looking to see how the baby was doing. You were looking for a photo of the baby. Is that a possibility? Yes. Were you obsessed with this family, Lucy? No. Now, the month of June 2015 has been discussed at length in this trial because during that month, several babies either collapsed or died on the unit. You might remember that in the space of a fortnight, between June the 8th and June the 22nd, 2015, three babies died. Baby A, Baby C and Baby D. A fourth baby, Baby A's twin sister, Baby B, collapsed and needed resuscitating. It's the prosecution's case that all four were injected with air by Lucy Letby. In the next interview we're going to hear, she was asked by the detective how she felt during that time. What were you thinking during that period? That it was a shock to have that many deaths. It must have been devastating. Yes, you just have to find a way to deal with it, to do the job and provide the care that we give. Did you at any stage think, what on earth is going on? Yes, that we were getting that number of babies in such a short period of time. Did any of the staff sort of question the hospital or colleagues as to where the spike was coming from? Not to the time aware of. Did you yourself? No. Why didn't you question or speak about the babies? In a formal way, because I didn't feel anything needed to be looked into. It was just a shock for everybody. You dealt with all of those, didn't you? What did you put it down to? Bad luck? Yes. Liz, throughout this trial, the jury have heard that Lucy Letby often communicated with colleagues after and sometimes during her shifts on the neonatal unit. We know one of the key elements of this case are messages Lucy Letby exchanged with colleagues after the collapses and deaths of babies. And in this next police interview, she was asked about WhatsApp messages between her and nursery nurse Jennifer Jones Key on a night shift on June the 13th into June the 14th, 2015. You might remember that this was five days after the death of baby A, who the prosecution say was the first baby to be murdered by Lucy Letby on June the 8th. It's worth reminding you about this WhatsApp exchange, which begins with Jennifer Jones Key and has been voiced by Axis. You okay? I just keep thinking about Monday. Feel like I need to be in one to overcome it. But E said no. Kiss. I agree with her. I don't think it will help. You need a break from full-on ITU. You have to let it go or it'll eat you up. I know not easy and will take time. I just feel I need to be in one to get the image out of my head. Mel said the same and E let her go. Being in three is eating me up. All I can see is him in one. Kiss. It probably sounds odd, but it's how I feel. Kiss. Well, it's up to you, but don't think it's going to help. It sounds very odd and I would be complete opposite. Can understand E, she's trying to look after you all. Well, that's how I feel from when I've experienced it. At the women's, I've needed to go straight back and have a sick baby, otherwise the image of the one you lost never goes. 
Why send Mel in if she's trying to look after us? She was in bits over it. Kiss. Don't expect people to understand, but I know how I feel and how I've dealt with it before. I've voiced that, so can't do any more, but people should respect that. Kiss. Okay, I think they do respect it, but also trying to help you. Why don't you go in one for a bit? Yeah, I've done a couple of meds in one. I'll be fine. Kiss. Forget I said anything. I'll be fine. It's part of the job. Just don't feel like there is much team spirit tonight. Kiss. I'm not going to forget, but just think you're way too hard on yourself. It is part of the job, but the worst part. But I do believe it makes us stronger people. Unfortunately, I've seen my fair share at the women's, but you are supported differently. And here, it's like people want to tell you how to think slash feel. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Kiss. A lot of girls say women don't support and tell them to get on with it. I think they don't mean to tell you though, and we're overcaring sometimes. Women's can be awful, but I learnt hard way that you have to speak up to get support. I lost a baby one day, and a few hours later was given another dying baby just born in the same cot space. Girls there said it was important to overcome the image. It was awful, but by end of day, I realised they were right. It's just different here. Kiss. Anyway, forget it. I can only talk about it properly with those who knew him, and Mel not interested, so I'll overcome it myself. You get some sleep. Kiss. So the messages indicate that after baby A died, Lucy Letby wanted to go straight back to looking after babies in intensive care. She says that had been her experience when she worked at Liverpool Women's Hospital. And the court heard that she was frustrated because instead she was allocated a less poorly baby in nursery three to look after. Yes, and the allegation is that within minutes of this WhatsApp conversation, Lucy Letby went into nursery one and murdered baby C. The following police interview has also been voiced by actors. Do you recall the conversation? No. What did you feel like you needed to overcome? I'm assuming I previously had a bad experience in one. Can you describe the image you were referring to? I think it's the image of baby A. What did you mean by it's eating me up? It's very difficult. When you see dead babies, it's hard to get that image out of your head. Why would going into nursery one help? Because I would see a different baby in there and see a different scenario to the scenario I had at the time when he died. How would it be a different scenario? It's a different baby. It's different staff. It's a different night. Because I think when you are going to the same incubator space and there is a different baby there, you know you let the one you lost go. Until you go into that space, you see that baby until another baby goes in there. You sent the final text at 11.09pm. Six minutes after you sent that, child C collapsed. Right. What are your thoughts on that? I don't have any thoughts on that. The text messages suggest you were frustrated at not working in Nursery 1. Do you agree? Yes. I think it would have helped me if I could have been in Nursery 1. You said being in Nursery 3 was eating me up, and all I can see is him in 1. Within six minutes you were in Nursery 1. Do you agree with that, Lucy? Yes. And within those six minutes... Baby C has collapsed? Yes. Did you cause Baby C to collapse when you went into him? No. You were the only staff member in Nursery 1 at the time Baby C collapses? Yes. And you were seen at the cot side when his alarm sounded? Yes. And at that time you were feeling upset and frustrated? Yes. You went on to attack Baby C? No, I haven't, no. Lucy, did you murder Baby C? No. So that's it for episode 29. Next week, we'll hear about what Lucy Letby had to say when she was interviewed by the police about the other babies in this case, babies J to Q. I'll be in court to listen to the evidence and you can read my reports on the case in the mail and on Mail Plus. You can also follow us on Twitter at Lucy Letby Trial or send us an email at thetrialofluciletby at gmail.com. See you then. <laughs>